in the house of the Lord one more time. What a blessing it is. But God woke us up this morning and started us on our way. Giving us another day, one that we've never seen before in our lifetime. And now it's time for our circle prayer. If you would like to join us at the altar, please. Come on down. And let's start off with praising our God. The God that has been so good to us. For his mercy and his grace and his love is everlasting. And we still want to thank him this morning for all he has done for us. Thank you for all that he is doing for us and he will do for us. So this morning, come on down and join us if you like as Miss Winston, Sister Winston will lead us in our circle prayer this morning. Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning. We have come into this house to worship the Lord. So Father, we just come before you in this circle and we're thanking and praising you for another night's sleep and for waking us up this morning and starting us on our way. We're here this morning to celebrate the graduates of 2024 from preschool all the way to graduate school, Lord God. So Lord, we lift up our youth, we lift up our young people, Father God, and we lift up our adults and our seniors, Lord, and we just thank you and we praise you for your anointing on all of them. We thank you and we praise you for great futures. You said that you have plans for us, plans of good and not of evil to give us and expect it in. So Father, we thank you for prosperity and success and good health for all of our graduates no matter the age, Lord, in the name of Jesus. So we lift up this service, Lord. We lift up those that are, are worshiping with us virtually. And we thank you even right now that the Holy Spirit is visiting them and indwelling them as well as us that's in this house of worship. So Lord, we give you praise and honor. We give you glory that all things will be decent and in order, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We come against any nervousness, Lord, any nervousness for any of the program participants, Lord. And Father, we give you praise and honor. We thank you for the speaker that will honor us with the message from God. Message for not just the graduates, for all of us, Lord God. We thank you for all of the program participants again, Lord, and we give you praise. We thank you that all of our needs are met whatever they might be, spiritually, physically, and emotionally in the name of Jesus. And we give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory in the majestic, matchless name of Jesus the Christ. We pray, and we say amen, and amen, and amen.
morning, church. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Please join us in our hymn of praise found on your hymnals on page 99. And it will be followed by our um, Old Testament reading by Patrice Pert and our New Testament reading by Jeremiah Murphy. Now we will have our Old Testament reading. Um, today's reading will be from the Old Testament, Psalms 138. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I sing your praise. I bow down towards your holy temple and give you thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness, for you to have exalted your name and word above everything. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased my soul of strength. All the kings of 
the earth shall praise you, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. They shall sing the words, they shall sing the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. For the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, but the haughty he perceives from far away. I thought I walk in the midst of trouble. You preserve me against the wrath of my enemies. You stretch out your hand, and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the world. Do not forsake the work of your hands. And now we'll have our New Testament reading by Jeremiah Murphy. Good morning, church. How y'all doing this morning? It's good, good. This morning I'll be reading from Philippians 4, 4 through 13. That says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding with guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me and the God of peace will be with you. I, I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at least, at last, you have revived your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned for me, but had no opportunity to show it. Not that I am referring to being in need, for I have learned to be content with whatever I have. I know what, is, I know what it is to have little, and I know what it is to have plenty. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being well-fed and of going hungry. I have plenty and of being in need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. For the word of God, for the people of God. Praise be to God. It's prayer time, church. If you have anything or anyone on your heart or mind, I invite you to the altar. Our morning prayer will be led by Andrew LaFour, followed by a song of praise and a recognition of guests by Dejanae Harrison. Good morning, church. Uh, my name is Angela Floor, and today I'll be doing the prayer. May everyone... Just give time. I'll give time for the people to come up. Just in case you know that the altar is open, come to the altar. If you have a prayer concern, come to the altar. If there's a family member in need, come to the altar. If there's a situation on the job, come to the altar. Mrs. Smith, come on to the altar. It's going to be all right. <laughs> Amen. The altar is open. The scripture says, make your prayer request known unto God. And the God who hears will answer. May everyone bow their head. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you have given us, Lord. We thank you for waking us up this morning. We thank you for helping us throughout the week and throughout our lives, Lord. And Lord, we hope that today will be a great day for everyone, Lord. That everyone's hearts will be soothed by your loving arms, Lord. And that everyone will know that how much you love them, Lord. And Lord, we thank you for 
all everyone that came here today. We thank you for our online listeners. We thank you for people, for our graduates, Lord. We thank you for everyone. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. amen. And may everyone remain here for the Lord's prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thine kingdom come, thine will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Try to have a little church this morning. Yeah, put those hands together. Come on, y'all. I'm a soldier in the army. I'm a soldier. Lord, I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. Lord, I'm a soldier in the army. I've got my war clothes on in the army of the Lord. I've got my war clothes on in the army. I've got my war clothes on in the army of the Lord. I've got my war clothes on. God church. I tell you, God is a good God church. I tell you, my God, He is a good, good God. My, my, my God is a good, good God. I tell you, God is a holy God. My, my God is a holy God. My, my God is a holy God. My, my God is a holy God. Now listen to this. There's a storm out on the ocean, and it's moving this way. If your soul not anchored in Jesus, it will surely drift away. There's a storm out on the ocean. And it's moving. Lord, if your soul not anchored in Jesus, it will surely drift away. Drift away. Drift away. Lord, it will surely, surely, surely drift away. If your soul not anchored in Jesus, it will surely drift away. Lord, drift away. Drift away. Lord, it will surely drift away. If your soul not anchored in Jesus, it will surely drift away. I'm going to live so God can use me. <laughs> Anywhere, Lord, anytime. 
I'm going to live so my God can use me anywhere, Lord. One more time, one more time. I'm going to live so my God can use me anywhere, Lord. I'm going to live, I'm going to live, Lord, I'm going to live like you want me to, Lord, I'm going to do what you want me to, Lord, I'm going to say what you want me to say, if you want me to sing, I got a song for you, if you want me to pray, I got a prayer. I'm going to praise your name each and every day in my special way. Going down on my knees, going down on my knees. I'm going to talk to the Lord each and every day. Hey, hey, Lord, I'm going to leave. Lord, I'm going to leave. I'm going to treat my brother right. I'm going to treat my sister right. I'm gonna treat my neighbor right, even my enemies, enemies right. I'm gonna live, Lord. I'm gonna live, Lord. I'm gonna live like you want me to, Lord. Lord, I'm gonna do what you want me to do, as long as you want me, Lord. Lord, here I am. Lord, here I am. Lord, here I am. Lord, here I am. I'm going to leave so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm going to leave so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. Good God Almighty. Ain't he good? Ain't he good? <laughs> Won't he make a way? Make a way out of no way. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna leave so God can use me anywhere, Lord. Anytime I'm gonna live so my God can use me anywhere, Lord. Anytime. Next, we will have our recognition of visitors and guests by Dejanay Harrison, and we'll have our parish notices by Cheryl Bentley, followed by a song of praise by Denicia Reed. Good morning, Andrews Chapel. I'm here to welcome you all of our visitors, those presenting with us and those visiting virtually. For those guests who are in the sanctuary, please raise your hand so that we all know that know who you are and for those visiting virtually, put your name in the chat box. Welcome to all our guests and now officially welcome by Pastor Reed. <laughs> That's Dajane right there. That's Dajane. <laughs> Amen, everybody. Amen. We, we welcome you to this hour of worship today as we celebrate our, uh, our graduates of the class of 24. We are excited that the Lord is in this house. Amen. 
If you're a first time or second or third time visitor with us worshiping this morning, if you're in this house, won't you uh, lift your hand that we can recognize you? Uh, if there are any visitors with us, a any visitors? All right, I see a yes, ma'am. In fact, uh, our speaker this morning, our guest speaker, her mother is with us. And if you don't mind, let me ask Dr. Lemons if, if she would stand and introduce her mom. Just yes. Yeah. This is my 91-year-old mother, Miss Loretta Davis. <laughs> amen, amen. Let's show her some love. Praise the Lord. Mother, we're delighted to have you with us this morning, and thank you for coming along to encourage your daughter and our speaker. We are so glad that you can be with us. And for those of you that are worshiping with us online this morning, we welcome you to this hour of worship. Uh, I remind you of one thing, you are not watching church. You, you didn't sign in, turn on, uh, start the live stream to watch church this morning. You are the church this morning, and we are here in worship. And I want to thank all of you for worshiping with us, whether online or here in person. We know that wherever two or three gather in his name, the promise of the Lord is that I will be in the midst. So thank you for worshiping with us, for because you are here, we know that Jesus is here as well. To those of you at home, uh, let's give them a great big shout out and a welcome to those that are worshiping online today. Come on, everybody in the house. Tell them welcome. Amen. And as Dazine said, go ahead and enter something in the chat line so we can know you're a guest or worshiper with us, and we'll respond. Uh, those of us here in the house, won't you take a moment, rise, find two or three, and just greet them this morning with the love of Christ. Come on, let's share God's love everywhere in the house.
Leaning, we are leaning. We're safe and secure from all alarm. We are leaning. Yes, we're leaning. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Amen. Amen. Now, I think we've got some notices that we want to give. So, uh, Sister Bentley is coming. She's going to share some information. And uh, we will keep right on in the spirit of worship. Amen. Okay, y'all pray for me. Amen. Good morning. How's everybody? The Andrews Chapel Second Joyful Drive By is scheduled for Saturday, June 15th at 10 o'clock. Now, if you're planning on attending, you need to confirm so you can um, again join the joy. This is important that we know that which size helicopter to buy. Okay. Ooh. Don't read it all. Okay, I won't read it all. Some updates from the various ministries. The Family Ministry Committee presents Happy Two Twenty Four on the fourth Sunday of this month, which is June the twenty third. Virtual watchers and members who will be absent on the fourth Sunday are encouraged to participate by sending a picture and your hat to the Communications Committee by Wednesday, June 19th. The 150th Church Anniversary Committee has been formed and we invite you to get excited about this monumental occasion to occur in 2025. More communications are planned to keep you updated on the progress. In the meantime, you can share your ideas with Deja Raines, Cornelia Smith, Randy Reed, or Dr. Connie Warren. Okay. Senator Gail Davenport invites you to the 23rd annual Juneteenth celebration scheduled on Saturday, June the 15th from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the Lake Spivey Recreational Center that's located 2300 Walt Stevens Road in Jonesboro. Atlanta District number three East nonprofit organization awards hundreds of scholarships to college students each year. You can help support our committee to youth education by giving a donation of $25. Okay. Baptism and dedication service will be Sunday, June the 16th at the morning worship service. The United Methodist Men Meeting is Saturday, June 13th at 8.30 to 10 o'clock a.m. at the Arnold's Education Center Fellowship Hall. Now, uh oh, oh, next page, next page. Top it up. Okay, the Andrews Chapel Second Joyful Drive By is scheduled for Saturday, June the fifteenth. This is a full activity filled weekend, so we will get started at ten o'clock p.m. A.M. My bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> 10 o'clock a.m. <laughs> That's all good? Okay, thank you. Now we have several upcoming meetings. The food bank <laughs> meet on Wednesday, June the 12th from 10 a.m. to 12 noon. And the North Georgia Annual Conference scheduled in Athens, Georgia from June 13th to June 15th. And the Clark Gammon Payne Scholarship Dinner it's Friday, June 14th, from 5 p.m. in Athens, Georgia. That's it? Okay. Thank you for your time. You have a blessed day. Amen. 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 We have a bulletin full of announcements today as, as our uh, other guests come in. Just to remind you that uh, as annual conference stands before us on at each annual conference, uh, the North Georgia Conference does a special offering. And this year's special offering has two uh, emphases, two ministries that are lifted up. One of them is the Murphy Harps Centers, which has helped uh, children that were homeless and children that were orphaned. They will be the recipient of one of our special offerings this week 
on Thursday evening. Um, the other special emphasis is the Ministerial Education Fund. Any students that have ever gone to seminary, those that sometimes receive scholarships to go to college, it is this, uh, this ministry that assists in providing funds for those scholarships. So today, we just want you to be aware that our benediction, not our benediction, but our benevolence offering, our benevolence offering today will be directed toward those two ministries of the North Georgia Conference, the Murphy Harps Centers for Children and the Ministerial Education Fund. Later, when we lift up our offering, we simply ask that you would, uh, whatever your check, whether it's electronic or you're offering a paper check, or even if you're placing cash into an envelope, please simply note uh, that your benevolence offering will, you can just note that offering will go for those two ministries. So we want to encourage you to be generous later as we lift our offering, for that will be the emphasis for North Georgia. And the last uh, announcement simply on that page, I don't know if, if you have it, it's the purple page. And uh, because it's the purple page, I'm not going to struggle with trying to read it because I can't read that, that writing on that purple page. But you have it, take a look at it, and it says something to the effect that um, um, fiscal year 24 APS adult education graduation, uh, June 18th at 6 p.m. Oh, you know what that is? Lord have mercy. I'm going to be doing the commencement speech. <laughs> I'm doing the commencement speech for the Atlanta Metropolitan uh, College, State College, and it's going to be on that date. So uh, we'll come back and talk some more about that. Amen. Amen. That's a good thing. I was kindly invited to present the, to be the commencement speaker for Atlanta Metropolitan State College on June the 18th at 6 p.m. And uh, pray for your pastor as he uh, prepares to do that as well. Amen, somebody? Amen. Well, that's enough announcements for today. If you have one, just make sure that you write that down and share that with us, and we'll get that before all of the people. We will continue. We have special music today, and our special guest... Uh, Soloist is none other than Miss Denisha Reed. And uh, amen, amen. I'm excited about that. She is a member of the class of 2024, a uh, graduate of Georgia State University with her uh, master's uh, business administration in health in uh, human resources. Amen. So let's put, your, put our hands together and greet Denisha, Miss Reed, as she comes. Good morning. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Um, as always, I'm so happy to be here and to celebrate with you all. And when my dad reached out to me to ask me to sing, I promise you I struggled to figure out what to sing because it's a really awkward place to be in, to be relatively young, and then try to sing something that's going to uplift God and, and really connect with everyone. And as I thought about it, one of the songs that came to mind, and I, I thought it was perfect because there are so many times where we forget the things that God has said. And if we would just believe the things that God has said, we wouldn't be surprised when those things come to pass. Um, and so I believe it's a song that is familiar to, if not all of you, most of you. And I don't just invite, I encourage you to sing alone. Don't let me sing up here by myself. But, um, you know, in all things, praise be to God. And so the song starts... The Lord is everything to me, he said. 
He would not come, he would my comfort be. The Lord said he would be right there. My God is everywhere. God said it. I believe it. God said it. I believe it. And I'm going to take him at his word. We'll do that again. The Lord is everything to be. He said he would my comfort be. The Lord said he would be right there. Okay, now we will have Trinity Henry to give us our introduction of graduates, followed by Esther Alexander with our Moving On Up student promotions, and a special recognition and presentation by Ashaki Henry. Good morning, Andrews Chapel. Good morning. I will be recognizing our graduates from high school and college, um, but we do have many who have been promoted. Um, school is not easy. High school is not easy. Elementary school is not easy. Middle school is not easy. College isn't easy. Graduate school is not easy. So please, pray for your young people. Pray for the people in school. It's a little bit more than books now. Pray for them. 
Um, I'm going to start with my own brother, Justice Henry. Please stand, sir. <laughs> Justice is a proud graduate of St. Mary's Academy. He plans to attend the school that I also attend, the University of Alabama. He will be studying. Uh, uh, mm, mm, mm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You got it right. He will be studying computer science and software engineering, along with entrepreneurship in their Epic Scholars program. Um, and his proud parents are also my parents, uh, Howard and Ashaki Henry. Yeah. Our next graduate that we have with us, um, I see one. Brandon, can you stand for me, please? Thank you. Brandon is graduating. He has graduated with his associate's degree in business technology and cybersecurity from Atlanta Technical School, and he will be attending Auburn University this fall. Um, his parents are Brandy Hambrick and Terry Pennington. He has been mentored by Mr. Ken Wills, and he is the nephew of Frenda Norwood. Can we congratulate him, please? Our next graduate is Ms. Patrice Pert, who read for us this morning. She graduated from Georgia College of State University in December of 2023 with her Bachelor's of Science in Criminal Justice. She is an intern at the Clayton County District Attorney's Office, and she plans to attend law school starting this fall. She is the daughter of Patrick and Adelaida Pert, and she is also the niece of Lois Pert. We are also congratulating um, Miss Den Denisha, I'm sorry, Reed, who g gave us that beautiful song. She graduated with honors from Georgia State University, having earned her master's in business administration with a concentration in human resource management. Her academic achievements reflect her commitment to making a significant impact in this field. Her faith, determination, and vi um, vision will guide her in making a lasting legacy. Um, after her graduation, she accepted a position with her alma mater, Georgia State University, in their division of human resources. She, her proud parents are Reverend Donald K. Reed, Ms. Nat Mrs. Natalie Reed, and Mrs. Felicia Taylor. Let's congratulate her. <laughs> are there any other graduates from high school and college with us this morning that I need to recognize? If that's everyone, let's give a final round of applause for all of our graduates. Amen, amen. Miss, Miss Henry, thank you so much. You did that so beautifully, so beautifully. Amen. And the only reason why I stand is I recognize that there is at least one that we did not include, one that was omitted, uh, not intentionally, but I want to make sure that we include her and her parents today, and I'm hoping that she'll be able to be with us on next Sunday. Her proud father is standing right there. Brother Terry, would you, would you uh, give a good shout out and tell us about your daughter, who is a graduate, University of Georgia, am I correct? All right, well you do it. Come on, come on up, brother, come on up, come on. Amen, amen, amen. Tell us her name. Tell us her name. Alexis Andrea Meadows. Come on, let's include her and show her some love. Her proud father standing right there. Amen, somebody. Good morning again. 
Now, the little Miss Henry went first with the college graduates and Mrs. Henry, her mom, and I'll be acknowledging those scholars who have been promoted from grade to grade. Now, it's important for you to realize that you don't graduate college unless you graduated kindergarten, first grade, second grade, third grade. It keeps on going. So it's not at the very end we celebrate. We start celebrating scholars from your little. If you know anything, if you know much about the school system, the third grade data dictates or determine the trajectory of a lot of these kids' life. So it's really, really important that we uplift our scholars from this stage. To hear Julian jingle with all his medals, warm my heart this morning. So we're gonna be calling them by names to acknowledge them, and it's a big deal, okay? So we're gonna make a big deal. Good morning, this is a great pleasure for me to introduce and to congratulate our kids. You know, they, they are so amazing. And parents, please, when you hear their names, allow your child to come down the aisle so we could uh, uh, give them a pin. And later on, after service, we have a goodie bag for them. I don't wanna give them to them right now because we could start another show. <laughs> so please um, help me to celebrate this very day um, from our kids. Uh, so I'm gonna pass it down to you. <laughs> okay, we're gonna be starting with Nova, Holly, and again, if you're here, please come up to be recognized. And that's a pre-create um, graduate. She was also in our Easter program, so if she's not here, we celebrate her. Um, Joelle Brown is another graduate of pre-K. And that's okay, Grandma will come. She was also in our Easter program, so we wanna celebrate her. Skylar Moody graduated from kindergarten. Come on up, Skylar. Come this way, Skylar. That way, baby. Kennedy Yancey from kindergarten. Alan LaFleur, kindergarten. Grandma will accept it on his behalf. Nevea Fitzgerald, kindergarten. Jeremiah Coplin, first grade. Not here, Copeland, I'm sorry. Grandma is here, you see how many grannies are here? They're praying grandmas, so they'll be college graduates as well. Julian Hammond, first grade. Go on, oh, look at that. Now you're jingling your medals. Levi McCoy, for third grade. Michelle Moody, third grade. Kennedy Mongo, fifth grade. Oh, I'm skipping all over the place. Levi McCoy, third grade. Michelle Moody, third grade. Caleb Mongo, third grade. I'm repeating now. Kennedy Mongo, fifth grade. Carter Holly, fifth grade. Grandparents again, you see? He'll be in the college soon as well. <laughs> Jeremiah Murphy, sixth grade. Dream Stevenson, sixth grade. Ian LaFleur, seventh grade. Carter Newman, eighth grade. James Moody, ninth grade. So high schooler. Desiree Harrison, ninth grade. Dirigi Harrison, ninth grade. Anne 
Andrew LaFleur, 10th grade. Biagene Brooks, 10th grade. Kennedy Moody, 10th grade. And I have some additional graduates, the entire Savage um, crew from our Easter program. Jason, Jaden, Jalen, and Gia Giovanni Savage are also graduating. And Chloe Thompson is also graduating. These are our graduates. Um, you keep them lifted in prayers. I know some are leaving buildings. You're moving from probably fifth grade to sixth grade, so you're officially a middle schooler now, or probably from eighth grade to ninth grade, which makes you an official high schooler. But whatever increment our grade, you're in our grade band, prayers are needed. The school system is very different now. So keep them lifted. This is where public speaking starts in the church. Reading starts in the church. So again, we want to lift up our young people and keep them coming. It's not for show. Keep them coming. Okay, so thank you so much. Uh, I would just like to take this time to congratulate all of our scholars, but I just wanted to congratulate, let you all know that Julian Hammond was one of my students at GG School of Excellence. I'm so proud of him. He received all A honor roll, a reading certificate, and also a math certificate. And I'm so proud of him, but I'm proud of all of them. And also, my daughter is here, I'm sorry. Brittany Pettis, she graduated also from, jo from Georgia Southern with her master's in middle level education. Brittany got her master's, as her mom said, um, towards the end, which is a very big deal. But even a bigger deal, I'm here to celebrate, I'm here to make note, I'm here to put the word out that her daddy was a Clayton County School System Teacher of the Year. So, Mr. Pettis, please stand. I want to share some fun facts about um, Reginald Pettis. To his loved ones, he's known as Spunk, okay? And this is not just a, a thing. This has been a lifelong character of his. He's 22 years retired Army. He retired as a lieutenant colonel. And he did not see it fit after retirement to just stay home, golf, sleep and go on trips. He decided to start a whole new career. And so after um, US Army, he decided that, hey, I'm gonna go into the school system, started as a sub, got his foot wet, became a certified teacher. I think it's about 10 years in Clayton County um, now. He serves at Eddie White um, Academy or Eddie White Middle School as a social studies teacher. But I just wanna let you know that these things are usually voted positions to be teacher of the year, usually your peers vote for you. So for you not to be a youngin, for you to be something from another career, and all the young folks and folks my age actually on that Google form say, hey, I'm going to vote for Reggie. That means you are the man, OK? Um, <laughs> you are the man. Great job. Not only, 
Not only is he retired military, not only is he the Clayton County Eddie White Teacher of the Year, he's also a lifetime Boy Scout member. My son, Justice Henry, who is leaving for college, who is sitting on a fr front bench, had Reggie as his Boy Scout leader as a little, 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 little. And so one of the things Reggie instilled a lot in our young people is historical facts. So it's not just Rosa Parks, but Claudette Colvin was a big deal. All the people you don't know, Reggie is quite familiar with the historic figures um, for black history. Um, he's also a Star Wars type of guy. He would sit for a while and speak to my husband about Star Wars. So again, this was all Boy Scout. So it's not just one hat that he um, wears, which make me very, very happy to celebrate him. So again, you're a retired Army. You're a Clayton County Teacher of the Year. You're a Boy Scout guy. You're a Star Wars guy. You're also the black historian. You're also the husband to Lana, who is standing over there, who is our usher. And you have your two daughters. Um, Brittany and Brianna um, Pettis. So again, I have not enough words to truly, truly celebrate you and what it means to be an educator in times like these. We have a small token we want to present to Mr. Pettis, but kudos to you. This is only the beginning because you have a lot more left in you. So probably in a few more years, we're going to be celebrating principal of the year. Okay, so Mr. Spunk, Reginald Pettis. so much. All right, if we could have Mr. Justice Henry come up and he will be introducing our speaker for today. Good morning, church. Good morning. I have been blessed with the honor to present our speaker today and she is Reverend Terilyn Davis Lemons. She is visiting with us from Newman Chapel United Methodist Church. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of a backstory on her. Reverend does not only love, well, she's not only showing love from the Newman Chapel, but she's also showing love from Louisiana as she is a native of Baton Rouge. She has been dedicated to Christ since the young age of 12 years old and she brings to us the Bible verse, Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1, as it says, The Lord, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach to the poor. Heal the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and open the prison to those who are bound. The verse in my eyes exp like, truly exemplifies who she is as a person as I read some of her achievements. And especially, it's also kind of inspiring to me to see her education journey. You see, she's a graduate in theology, well, she's also a graduate in theology and nursing, but let me list out her theological endeavors. She has earned her Master of Divinity degree from Gammon Theological Seminary at the Interdenominational Theological Center. While there, she was awarded the highest female GPA award and served as a student representative for the Gammon Seminary Board of Trustees. Outside of her theological theological studies, she has earned a Bachelor's of Science in Nursing from the, from the University of Louisiana and has a dual Master's from Emory University in Atlanta, one from Georgia, one in Master's of Public Health Administration, and the other in the Master of Nursing Primary Family Care Nurse Practitioner with more than 20 years of experience. She's also a certified and registered nurse, and along with that, She's overall just highly achieving. Like, is <laughs> as someone who just graduated high school, she's pretty inspiring if you ask me. So I want to give it over to Reverend Lemons. Well, good morning, church. Congratulations to all of the great potential leaders of our world today. Congratulations also to Reggie. Congratulations. 
You know, we always have to know that we have to give him praise for everything that we do. And in so doing that, we have to give him praise. I can't let a day go by without praising his name. I can't forget from whence I came. I can't let a day go by without counting the cost. I can't let a day go by without praising his name. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I can't let a day go by without praising his name. I can't forget from whence I came. I can't let a day go by without counting the cost. I can't let a day go by without praising his name. I can't let a day go by without praising I can't forget from whence I came. I can't let a day go by without counting the cost. I can't let a day go by without praising his name. I can't the fire I've been through the flames and like a good soldier God knows how I can how I've been story that's got to be told he brought me out as pure gold, I can't help it to keep it to myself. I got to run, 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 run and tell somebody else. Oh, hold on, just. Be strong. My God is still on the throne. Oh, oh, oh I can't let a day go by without praising His name. I can't forget from.
you, but I can't let a day go by without praising his name. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. There's none like him in all the heavens and all the earth. Thank you, men, Chorus. Amen. Hallelujah. Indeed, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. I was so glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. Yes, yes. And I'm so thankful to Reverend Donald Reed for the invitation for this student recognition Sunday. But I wanted to acknowledge a couple of people. I've been knowing Reverend Reed for a long time, even before I went into ministry. <laughs> and I'm thankful I want to acknowledge a few people. One is Felicia Taylor, because when I was a family nurse practitioner in my other life, we were co-workers, amen? And then I also want to recognize Natalie Reed because Natalie and I were members at Cascade together, amen? amen? So we thank God for both of them. But then our special person is Denisha Reed, <laughs> amen? Thank you for that song. But we know that God has more to do in your life, amen? amen. HR is just a pit stop. <laughs> I know you don't want to hear that, but thus saith the Lord. <laughs> Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> My scripture reading this morning comes from 1 John chapter 2, verse 14 from the CEB Bible. Hear these words. 1 John chapter 2, verse 14 from the CEB Bible, Common English Bible Version. Little children, I write to you because you know the Father. Parents, I write to you because you have known the one who has existed from the beginning. Young people, I write to you because you are strong and the word of God remains in you and you have conquered the evil one. This is the word of God for us, the people of God, and we say, Thanks be to God. Please pray with me as I preach from the sermon topic, successful higher education, successful higher education. Let us pray. Awesome God, your plans for us are great. May this message be a blessing. Lord, forgive us our sins, our transgressions, our iniquities, and create in us clean hearts and renew righteous spirits within us and open our ears and our minds and our hearts to hear a word from you. Jesus, anoint us with your blood and your love and this place. Holy Spirit, minimize your preacher. Maximize your Holy Spirit within me. That the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts might be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' name. And let the church say amen. 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 And amen for the Holy Ghost. Amen. To the parents. Good morning, and to the members, good morning. good morning. But to the youth and the young adults, what's going? <laughs> Summertime is preparation time for young people. It's a time to reflect on what you got right last year and what you need to work on in the next year. Right. For those who have finished college or a master's degree or technical college, you may be taking on a different reflection. What's going to happen in the next year? What direction should I take? Will I go to school or college or technical college? Or will I move back home? What will I study if you're headed to college? But for those who are currently in college, you might be just thinking about how can I make this year a better year? Well, I want to give a little piece of advice. Study more, <laughs> party less. But you know both can be done, amen? Because uh, if you study first, 
and then you party later, you can all get it done. Amen? Amen. So these are important questions, and many never reach their full potential because they don't meditate on these questions about their future. They just kind of drift along with impulsive actions. I want to encourage you this morning, young people, don't let rappers, Lil Baby, All right. Drake, Kendrick Lamar, or future tell you who you are. Amen? Amen? Don't allow pop culture, rap music, or friends to define who you are and what it means to be you. When you're listening to the rap battle between Drake and Kendrick Lamar, right. we know there's this question mark, right? But don't let that be your question. You be concerned about what God has called you to be. Amen. Let me say it like Apostle John, the disciple of Jesus. I see great hope in our youth and young adults. I see it in each of you. And you may ask why? Because you are God's beloved. First Peter 2 and 9 says it this way. But we, you are a chosen people, you are a royal priesthood, you're a holy nation, you're a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Oh, yeah. Through Jesus, we can go directly to God for help in our time of need because we have a relationship with God's son. God loves you more than you will ever understand. The devil may want you to believe that you're not enough that you're not good enough, that you're not smart enough, that you're not pretty enough, that you're not light enough, that you're not dark enough. But I want you to know, young people, that you are enough. Yeah, yeah. Can I hear you say, I am enough? Uh, I didn't hear you. you li young people, I want you to say, I am enough. And I want you to believe it, because you are enough. Apostle John wrote this text. He knows what successful young people are made of because he saw it in the young people in his churches. And his observation give us the plan for success. John's observation from the text reveals how to obtain successful higher education. I want to discuss three questions with you this morning, and they include the following. Number one, what do you need? Number two, where can we find strength? And number three, how do we fulfill our purpose? And that's not just for the youth and young adults, that's for each of us. The first question this morning is, what do we need? In John's letter, he says to these young people, he reveals what they need is strength. He says, young people, I want to write to you because you are strong. John is not talking about physical strength, you know, that comes from working out. Uh, we know that you can run circles around us who are older, amen? But John's not talking about this natural physical gift of youth. Instead, he's praising them for a strong inner strength. Mm -hmm. The way to succeed in life is to learn to tap into God and your inner strength. The strength that will teach you two important words. One, resist and persist. Can I get y'all to repeat that? Resist and persist. With all your strength, resist the things that bring you harm. Resist lust and materialism and laziness and addiction and anxious thoughts and narrative that tell you who you are and you're really not. The things that deter you from the path that God has ordained for your life. Then use your strength to persist. Persist in the pursuit of God's plans, all that is good, that is peaceful, righteous, and productive. John praises the youth of the church for their inner strength. But this kind of inner strength must be cultivated. There are plenty of distractions. Would y'all agree? Uh, let's talk about Snapchat, TikTok, right. Twitter called X, uh -huh. Instagram, and sometimes it's just playing on the cell phone that can cause you to be distracted. All young people are determined to succeed, but determination is not enough unless it is nurtured by striving for excellence. A physical trainer tells us to be strong, so you must develop your inner core. 
You know, that's the part of your body that sustains you as you move to strengthen your extremities. Right. Well, consider for a moment that your soul and your spirit has an inner core. Mm -hmm. And it also needs to be strengthened. And you can't blame circumstances for failing if you don't take time to develop this inner strength. John is admiring young people for developing their spiritual core by growing in scripture and favor and grace. This same path will give you the strength that you need to succeed. But you have to understand, young people, you can't do it alone. John reveals that there is an important advocate and ally to help strengthen your inner core. And he tells us where this ally can be found, which leads me to my next question. Where can we find inner strength? All right. It's found in God. John says you are strong and the word of God remains in you because John observed that these young people had learned not just to trust in their own strength, which sometimes we want to do, but they had connected to the inner strength of the Holy Spirit. Your parents were once young and may not understand all that you're feeling or that you're going through, however, they want the very best for you. And if you want to be strong, let the word of God occupy your mind and your heart instead of rap music. All the strength you need to acquire can be found when the pages of the book we call the Bible is in your heart. You see, nothing's left for chance. King Solomon was the wisest person, the wisest king that ever lived. And he said these words from the book of a class, uh, he says, everything that is, has, or will be experienced has been addressed and explained by God. So in essence, young people, everything that you're going through, your parents have already experienced, have gone through, they're fully aware, amen? amen. And so if you take time to read the details of God's plans for your life, it will actually blow your mind. You're looking for drama, it's here. Uh, you're looking for a good story, it's here. Yeah, it's yeah. better than The Real Housewives of Atlanta or any of the other reality TV shows, amen? So take time to see where God is at work in the world around you and link up with God's power and spirit and truth because it's not just about you, it's also about everything that's around you. Connect with service projects. Connect with other people who are going in the same direction that you're going. Because I can remember my aunt used to tell me a long time ago, birds of a feather flock together. Ah, yeah, yeah. uh, But if you have somebody who's flocking with you that's pulling the wrong direction, then you're tempted to go in the wrong direction. Amen? Amen. So your friends are so important. They can either influence you and encourage you, or they can distract you and deter you. And so there's a remedy for everything that would seek to destroy you, but you must be willing to seek and soak your mind and your heart with God's word so you can understand his ways and your future rests with your abiding faith in who the Lord has created you to be. And I know that sometimes these words don't make sense. It's a lot, but I want to encourage you young people and parents, get this book, The Life Application study Bible from the New International Version. I'm going to say it again. The Life Application Study Bible, the New International Version. Now, why do I say that? Because with the study Bible, once you read a scripture, you look at the footnote and it will tell you how to apply it to your everyday life. You see, it's one thing to read something and not understand how to apply it. And it's another thing to read it and apply it and actually carry it out. And when you carry it out, then it impacts who you are and your actions and your behavior. But if you're reading something and you don't understand what you're reading, that's not helpful either. And that's why you have to have the right type of Bible. You see, God's motives and principles are wonderful, but you must keep them close to your heart. Do yourself a favor and study the word of God. Think about it, meditate it, learn on it. Let it assume residence within you. Jesus said, Take my word and learn of me. Yeah, yeah. You see, in the military, a soldier, and you know this, a soldier is useless unless they load their gun. Am I telling the truth? <laughs> and know how to use it. Because you not only have to load it, but you have to know how to use it. Because right. if you don't know how to use it, it's still a problem. Amen? Amen? 
And so with the word of God, you have to know how to use it. So when the attacks of the enemy come, you know, the attacks that tell you that you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, you can't ever learn this, then you use the word of God and say, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Yeah, yeah. You use the word of God. It says, trust in the Lord with all my heart and lean not to my own understanding, but in all of our ways I acknowledge God and he will direct my path. So you have to use this word as a weapon to attack any strongholds or attacks that's coming at you. Load up yourself with scripture because sometimes you may be in the middle of a test and you can't pull out this Bible. But if you have it in your word, in your heart, the Holy Spirit will pull it up for you. Whatever you need, amen? And so I want to encourage you to also listen to praise and worship music in between some of that rap, amen? And so listen to music like Kirk Franklin, Travis Green, Intentional, Ty Tribbett, We Gonna Be All Right, because indeed you're gonna be all right, Tasha Cobb Leonard, Your Spirit. And as you listen to music, especially rap music, uh, non-Christian music, I want you to listen to the lyrics and ask yourself, do these lyrics affirm who God says that I am? All right. If the lyrics don't confirm, let it go. Yeah. Drop it. Because it's gone going contrary to what God says you are and who God has called you to be. Amen? And a lot of times we say, oh, I'm not listening to the words, I just like the music. But I want you to know that after you listen to music for a while, guess what? Those words get in you. As a matter of fact, you can ask a little child, if they've been listening to music, they can tell you the words, amen? They may not know what it means, but they can tell you the words. So it does matter what you listen to, and it will matter because it will get in your spirit and your heart. So you got to listen to the right stuff, amen? amen? And so if you want to be strong, do all these things because the world and the life is difficult to navigate. So open the doors to Jesus Christ and let him come in. Also, be willing to not only just study the word, but listen. All right. Because the Lord wants to speak to you. He wants to tell you how much you are loved and how important you are to him. But when you take the time to be still and listen, he'll speak. So now that you know what we need, and where you can find inner strength. But once you have that, now how do you fulfill your purpose? The last question is, how do we fulfill our purpose? According to this quote by Joshua McDowell, he says, the two most important days of your life are the day you were born and the day you discovered why you were born, your purpose. You see, humans made in the image of God have a purpose to be in relationship with God. Why? Because he knew us before we were in our mother's womb. He had already ordained our plans and purpose for our life. In Jeremiah 29, 11, he says, what? I know the plans I have for you. They are what good and not evil to give you a hope right. and a future. Mm -hmm. And so his purpose is important. And a lot of times, God's purposes are greater than our plans. And sometimes we look at those purposes and say, oh, I can't do that. But with God, you can do all things. All things. Amen? Amen? And so when we forget that we have a purpose and a meaning in life, then we go off track. All right. And the other purpose is to fight against sin. John writes to his young disciples, he said, you've conquered the evil one. What a commendable achievement. In their youth, they had exposed Satan's plot against them, and they had won their victory. So I'm encouraging each of you to win the victory in this fight called life. They had discovered the sins that would hinder them, that would ruin their reputation, that would corrupt their character, that would burden their back, that would shorten their life, and would spoil their future. And then no one could say to them, he or she ate. Uh, for the rest of the adults, that means you did a great job. <laughs> uh -huh. Your purpose is realized when you study and gain knowledge in the word of God needed to be successful in what God has called you to do for him. And then you can say, it's giving, or I like it, or others will say to you, oh, he or she ate, which means they did a great job. Right. Seek God to understand what God is calling you to do in your life to fulfill your destiny. 
and then while in school, study hard to help fulfill your purpose. Take the necessary classes. I know there's some classes that you want to avoid, but take the necessary classes, summer internships, camps, or attend volu or volunteer with Vacation Bible School, and also take Bible study. You know, in college, wherever you are, they normally have services on campus or a church nearby, so get involved with the church. And also get involved with the church choir. Denisha Reed know about that, amen? <laughs> I say that because she, her choir from Georgia State came to sing at my church at Noonan Chapel, and they blessed our soul. But they were also a family, because when you get connected, yeah, yeah. you're now connected not just by your uh, your, your classmates and all of that, but you're connected by the Spirit of God. Yeah. And so it's not just the duration of your life, but it's the donation of your life. Mm. As you've heard them talk about this teacher of the year, we know how much donation of life is so important and how it affects the legacy and the life of other people. And that's what God is calling you to do. He's calling you to impact others because our generation is counting on your generation to make a difference. You see, it's God who gives us the ability to be successful and prosperous. It's not just about prospering, but it's also about being successful and having peace. If you understood what I just said, can you say, note it? Oh, that's another one of their terms, amen? <laughs> Walk in your purpose for successful higher education. And when you have challenges, your friend texts WYD, Respond with, we all have battles to face. Evil is everywhere, but God is greater. TTYL. Right. <laughs> Ask your young people what all that means, amen? <laughs> your challenges may be that the bully who won't let you have peace, the teacher who has prejudged you who think you can't do it, the temptation to take what is not yours, the flesh that lusts for a moment of pleasure, the designer clothes and bags and shoes that promise artificial identification. Don't let your youthful inexperience be your only guide because you are enough. Amen. You are enough. Amen. See, we often base our self-esteem and our self-worth on our accomplishments but our relationship with Jesus is far more important than sports, friends, careers, successes, and knowledge. Not only are we our parents' children, but we have been chosen by God as daughters and sons of God. And you can be confident and have a strong self-esteem because God loves you and because of your faith in God. Remember, your value and peace comes from being one of God's children, not from what you achieve. Because at the end of the day, if something happens to the basketball, baseball, football career, you're still you, amen? amen. And you're still enough. That's right. That's right. Young people, my prayer is that you do things according to God's way, God's will, and God's timing. You do not have to bow down to peer pressure, gossip, low self-esteem, name calling, in order to be the most popular person in the room because God's plans for you are good and not evil, and because each of you are a designer original. Nobody else can be you, because you are a designer original. And you are enough. Amen. The young people in Apostle John's church achieve success, and it's the highest of education, and you can have it too, just like she just finished her master's. You can go on and do that as well. But then God may be calling you to technical school. Mm -hmm. Do you know that I know we encourage our young people to go to college, but do you know how much plumbers and HVAC and all these uh, mechanics make, amen? amen? So we encourage them to go to technical schools as well. Amen. And that's successful. And so when, now that you know what you need, where to get strength, how to fulfill your promise, you can have it too. How? When you surrender your life and your purpose to God, then he will take you to higher heights than you can even imagine or dream. Because sometimes our plans are on the chicken level, 
But God is trying to take us to the eagle level. You see, God's plans and purposes for our lives are greater. Victory will be yours if you will be strong in the Lord and the power of his might, according to Ephesians 6.10, and only then you will have the power to conquer a misery with God's mercy, the power to conquer loneliness with God's love, the power to conquer sorrow with God's joy, and the power to conquer fear with God's peace, the power to conquer anxiety with God's blessed assurance, and the power to conquer burdens with Jesus Christ's comfort. You see, Jesus Christ gives you freedom from fear, frustration, doubt, anxiety, indecision. Jesus Christ will give you freedom from shame, separation, drugs, desperation. Jesus Christ will give you freedom to pursue successful higher education. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. The doors of the church are open. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ, please stand as you're able. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I invite you to come forth. And maybe you're not sure that you are saved or that you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. I invite you to come forth and accept him as your Lord and Savior. Why? because he loves you. Come on to Christ. Come on to Christ right now. And also, I want to invite any of the youth or graduates to come forth to the altar. I just want to pray over you. All of my students, come forward. And even recent graduates with the master's degree, come on over. Christ to you, oh my sister, oh my brother, so much. I know that there's plenty of good room. So that means everybody else in the house is saved. Amen? All right. Let us pray. I want to pray over these young people. Father God, we love you today. We praise you. We thank you for each and every student under the sound of my voice. I ask that you would cover them with the blood of Jesus from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. I pray, Lord God, I cover them with the whole arm of God. Place on each of their heads the helmet of salvation to protect their mind. Give them the mind of Christ, the wisdom of God, the tongue of the learned. Place on their chest the breastplate of righteousness. Gird up their waist with the belt of truth. Get their feet ready to spread the gospel of peace. Lift up the shield of faith by which to quench every enemy fiery door. Lift up the sword of spirit, the word of God, to fight off every attack of the enemy that would come against them.
Father God, I thank you that no weapon formed against these youth shall prosper. And every tongue, Lord God, we condemn in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that you would order their steps in your word. Lord God, I thank you that your plans for them are good and not evil to give them a hope and a future. I pray, Lord God, that the young people are going from middle school and elementary to high school. I pray, Lord God, that you would agree with them, give them favor, give them wisdom, give them knowledge, understanding, favor with their teachers, success on every test and every paper they have to write. And Lord, I pray for the college students. I pray for the graduate students, those high school graduates. I pray, Lord God, that you would give them wisdom, that you would order their steps, that you would separate them from everyone they need to be separated from, that you would connect them with those who they need to be connected to, for Lord God, so that they will uh, direct them in a godly path, Lord God, that they will be successful. And Lord God, I pray, Lord God, that not only will you do that, but Lord God, you're going to be their rear guard. And I pray for the parents, Lord God, that you would strengthen them, that you would cover them, that you would give them peace, even as they have sleepless nights worried about their children, that you would give them your peace that surpasses all understanding, that mounts guard over their hearts and their minds in Christ Jesus. And Lord, I pray for our youth and young adults who may be dealing with anxiety, uh, anxious thoughts and worry and concern and bullying, Lord God, and our mental health issues. I pray that you would deliver them, that you would heal them them that you would set them free father God they, they would be delivered from everything that holds them in bondage Lord God I pray that they will be free in Christ Jesus and so Lord we love you today we praise you and we worship you and we give you glory we give you honor and we give you praise it's in your son Jesus name we pray amen amen, amen. amen. And amen. hallelujah yeah. you may be seated It's tithes and offering time. We have three ways that you can give. But first we ask our ushers to come to the front. Um, if you're at home worshiping, worshiping with us at home, you can give electronically through the website. You can also mail in a check to the P.O. box um, for your tithes and offering. Um, or you can give in person. Uh, thank you. Let's bow our heads as we would pray for this offering and it will bless the gifts. Gracious God, thank you for this day. Thank you for the gifts as well as the gift givers. As these tithes and offerings are rendered unto you, bless them and increase them. May they be used to help us to proclaim the gospel around the world. Bless them, O oh God, that we can use them to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world from the children the youth, the adults, and even seniors. Bless these gifts, O oh God, that we can use them to engage in ministries all around the world through the reach of the United Methodist Church. And O oh God, we pray that you would bless them, that we might use these gifts to help those who come to us in need. Bless the gifts as well as the gift givers. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We ask the ushers if they would come forth now. And remember today, we're asking you to be generous and give. Give generously in your tithes. Give generously through your offerings. And our benevolence today will be directed towards the Murphy Harps Children's Ministries and the Ministerial Education Fund. Put a little something extra in there today. Give as God has given to you, of good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Now the ushers are going to direct you, beginning with the rows in the back, to move toward the windows 
and we want everyone to come around. Whether you have anything or not, all that are able, just walk around and render your tithes and offerings. Come on, fellas, let's lift up the Lord.
Before we have our benediction, there are a couple of special announcements we uh, need to make and presentations. I'm going to ask if our education, here she is. It's me again. <laughs> In celebrating our youth, it's important for us to also celebrate people who work with our young children. We had vacation Bible school just this past week, and Lana Pettis again for the save. So we want to celebrate Miss Pettis if you would come forward. We have a small token of appreciation. Thank you, Ms. Pettis. Yes. <laughs> Just your continuous support means the world to us. She takes her time, dedication. The kids come in during the summertime, and it's nighttime. So it's not just you come and eat and go home. It takes planning, craft, Miss Neil, Miss Anne Marie. So again, to just plan and coordinate things take time. So we thank you, Ms. Pettis, for your unwavering love and support. All righty. To all of our graduates, here's just a, a notice that uh, after we've had our benediction, we are going to do uh, group pictures. And we're asking if all of the graduates would meet uh, in front of the Arnold Education Building next door. And we're going to do photos over there. And of course, if you want to make sure that you got a photo in here, you uh, get one in front of the picture, in front of the flowers. and and here at the altar. Now I want to make sure that I do this. All of you young people that are here today, and, and this is not for you, but this is for your parents and your grandparents, so make sure you tell them this. We meet every Sunday. Listen, I can't stress how important that is in a world where nightly and daily our children and our adults are taking each other's lives. The safety and the blessing of the community of God cannot be stressed enough. Life, I think the songwriter said it this way, Time is filled with swift transition. We are here today and gone tomorrow. None on earth unmoved can stand. Sooner or later, life catches up with all of us. The only solution is to build our hopes on him who is eternal. We must teach our children and each other to hold to God's unchanging hand. Amen. So I encourage you, young folk, help me do this. Make sure we tell our parents and our grandparents, church is going on every Sunday. <laughs> and then remind them, listen, all of you young people and youth and children, young adults that were here today, we need you, we need you in the choir. If one of our church members, she's gone now, but if she were here today, she would be saying, uh, make sure we, you are here for the choir rehearsal who, and, and identifying the musician. But we need you. Christ needs you. You are his witnesses in the world. And I simply quote our speaker today. The Lord has a calling on you. He wants to use you. He has a calling and wants to use you. Uh, we thank you today for all of you that have made it to the next grade. You're going on to the next thing. God bless you. Congratulations to you. To the teacher of the year for Clayton County. For the teacher of the year. That's, I, I, 
I'm not talking somewhere else. I'm talking the teacher of the year is one of your own brothers and sisters. He is here with you. Brother Pettis, stand up. Let's make sure we honor <laughs> Dr. Pettis today. Amen, somebody. Brother Red, just say, just say a couple of words. Greet us. Say a couple of words. Teacher of the year right there. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. Lana's smiling back. She got the biggest smile back there. She had the biggest <laughs> smile when Brother Pettis was standing up. To our graduates this year, we honor you. Let's, I want to ask you if you would please stand. All of our graduates, all of those going on to the next grade, going on to the next great thing, please stand up wherever you are. All of you. Come on, let's show them some love. Brandon, I see you, Brandon. God bless you, brother. Amen, amen. Let's show them love. Come on, put your hands together. Amen. You didn't stand up, but that's all right. Amen. God bless you. We thank you. We we'll look forward to seeing you on next Sunday. God has a calling on your life. I can't call you, but I'm just selling well, I'll let, I'll let Reverend Terry say that. So, Again, finally, before we go, we're going to have a fellowship and refreshments next door. So we want to invite everybody to come over and share with us in the refreshments. Remember, photographs are going to be taken in front of the Arnold Education Building. And last thing, before we have our benediction, let's show some love for our speaker, Reverend Terry Simmons. L Lemon. Terry Lemon. Amen. Come on, let's show some love. Please stand as you're able. For our benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. May you remember that you are enough and that God's plans for you are good and not evil to give you a hope and a future. And each person under the sound of my voice has a purpose and a call on their life. God wants to use you. And so we give him the glory, the honor, and the praise. And Lord, we pray now that you would bless the food and the hands that prepared it as people prepare to go to the reception. And we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church Say amen, God has spoken, let the church